up in Northern California this weekend visiting some friends. We are in between cities of Chico and city of Oroville, California, which is known as the City of Gold. Uh, we have a friend who is also into treasure hunting. He told us about this old house site location where he's seen square nails. So we're hoping to get up there, do some metal detecting, and maybe find some cool old coins or relics. And if that place doesn't pan out, we just went to breakfast with some other friends and they told us about another location a little further up where people have found some old stuff. So we might go check that out later. If you guys like what you see today, make sure to like this video and subscribe to our page. Thanks. As you guys can see, we're kind of out here in the boondocks. We think we found the location where the old house site was, but um, a lot of this vegetation is very tall and thick. Might not be wise to walk through it. It is rattlesnake season and it'd be very difficult to metal detect in it. We might just try to drive up to the other location and see if that would be better. But we're still poking around a little bit and seeing if there's anywhere we can detect up here. Well, we were asked to leave from our first location. I'm not trying to make it too conspicuous, but it's actually following us out. I don't know if you can see him behind us. He's following us in a truck. So we're just gonna get out of here, get off this road and try to find somewhere else to look around. <laughs> and a video of the mirror so you guys can see him following us. <laughs> We've never had that happen before. Which way do we come from, this way? Well, we're still driving down this long road we came down. Now there's two trucks following us. I think they're talking to each other. <laughs> this other truck popped out of some side road. They're both Toyotas. <laughs> We're just trying to get out of here. <laughs> there they are. Well, we went down a completely different dirt road just to see if they really were following us. We just made it to this paved road finally. Um, the white truck definitely followed us all the way down. Once we got to a certain spot, the gray truck turned off. <laughs> they really didn't want us up there. Okay, we're back on the main road. That truck made sure to follow us all the way out until the dirt road ended. Uh, we were driving up that road for a while before we noticed the truck was following us. It's a public road with fire service roads coming off of it. So we were allowed to be there, but once we noticed he was following us, we pulled over and he came over to talk to us and he told us to leave and then he made sure to follow us all the way out uh, it's okay though we're heading over to our next location and we'll try to treasure hunt there it's a little frustrating being asked to leave like that we weren't trespassing we always make sure to get permission to metal detect and be super respectful if we are on private property and we checked different apps to make sure that we weren't going to be on private property. Um, so it's a little bit of a bummer to be asked to leave like that, but we're just heading over to our next location and hopefully we'll have better luck over there. We pulled over to a little lookout site. You can see for so far, it's really pretty up here. Northern California is such a beautiful place and there's lots of places for us to keep exploring. This is the Green Bridge. It's also known as the gateway to Berry Creek. We're headed up to Berry Creek right now. It's just a little bit above Oroville, California. This is Lake Oroville. It's a pretty big lake up here. They have a lot of boats down there, people jet skiing and fishing. They're probably all up here for the 4th of July. Uh, this lake is pretty famous because of the Oroville Dam. It actually almost bust a few years ago and it would have flooded the whole valley. It was a pretty big deal. It was on the news and you guys can probably look up YouTube videos about it. They just rebuilt the dam recently. 
as you can see, there's a bunch of cars driving by. It's a little loud up here, but there's a great view. We're out in the woods now, surrounded by trees. We're heading to our second location. It is gorgeous out here. We're up here trying to find this location that our friends told us about. And we came across this pretty creek. It's so peaceful out here and gorgeous. I just had to film it. We found a little dump site and we pulled out a few old cans, old beer cans. This one says Lucky Draft. And this one is an Olympia beer can. They're a little bit tore up, but no bullet holes or anything, which means no one's been out here shooting it or anything. And this, kind of old fencing. There's a railroad stake through it. I think we're out near logging country, so it could have to do with that. The surrounding area is littered with these cans. These ones look like they've been shot. They have a lot of holes in them. Let's pick them up. You can see the label on that one. Grape soda. There's a few more over here. The more I move these leaves and look, the more cans I find. There's some buried in here. I'm gonna keep looking around. I pulled my metal detector out. I got a little bit of a somewhat solid signal right here. We found our first coin. It's a newer dime from 1999. Probably from people who camp out here. We found some, this old fire pit and we found some new beer bottles. It's a really nice area to go camping next to a little creek. I was digging next to this big tree. There's my hole right there. There's a lot of newer trash out here. As you can see, here's a beer cap in the dirt right there. Yeah, a lot of newer trash, but we're hoping to find some old stuff. I've been digging this hole and when I rescan, it still sounds pretty good. I'm thinking maybe it's a big can or something. So we're gonna keep checking. It's right back here. Pull some of this loose dirt back. In case it's something good, I just wanna get as much dirt out with my hand. Hey, I got it out. Oh, there is a nail. That can't be it though. The signal was screaming on the metal detector, so I'm gonna check again. I rescanned again, and after moving all the dirt, it sounds like a maybe four or five now on my detector. So I'm gonna keep checking with the pin pointer. my hand. Keep this. Oh, I must have dropped it. Oh, there it is. Dropped it. It's a bullet. Or bullet casing. Sound means there's something big on the surface. I see it right there. It seems like they've been shooting a lot out here. We find a lot of shotgun shells. Oh, actually, I see another one right here. And there's some beer cans. There's there's a new Budweiser can I see over there in the bushes. I'll go pick that up in a second.
over by that shotgun shell. I'm getting a lot of different signals. Most are not that great. Something else that's big. I don't see it. Well, there's something big right here. Let me just figure out what that is. Gosh, <laughs> huge chunk of metal. Right where I pulled out the big piece of metal, I'm getting some good signal. And then sounds like there's more big pieces of metal in there. So I'm gonna keep digging. Oh, I see another shotgun shell over here. Might as well pick it up while I see it. Okay. okay, let's dig out what this is. Let's see. Oh, right. That's probably why it was sounding like a six. <laughs> All right, we're finding more cans. I just pulled these ones out. They were on the surface. Looks more lucky draft and some other cans. But then we decided to dig down a little bit. And it looks like we found a whole little dump pile. The ones that are deeper in the ground might be a little better preserved and we can actually clean them up a little bit. We're super excited. Somebody out camping buried all their treasure, aka beer cans and old dip containers. Some of these look so great. We lined those ones up on top. We got some pop tops here in this jar. Here's the hole we're pulling them out of. We know they go way back because we keep pulling more out in that direction. So we're gonna keep digging. All right, we dug a bit. Here's the hole. We kept digging around and down until the dirt got harder and we stopped finding cans. So I think we pulled them all out. We didn't find much. Here it is. We got all of these cans at the bottom are pretty tore up. We might not be able to clean those, but these ones on top are in great condition. Some. Pepsi Cola cans, this one's orange soda, a bunch of Olympia beers, Lucky Draft beers. This is my favorite find, an old Pepsi bottle. Got this jar full of pop tabs. And then the rest of the trash that we found. We've been driving down the road a bit further we're looking for another spot to keep detecting. That first location was awesome. So we're hoping to find another one just as good. But we are out here in the wilderness. <laughs> it's like Jumanji out here or something. We found this really pretty part of the creek. It's nice and clear. This creek has been running along the whole side of the road that we've been driving down. There's a lot of sand over here next to the creek. And we figured we're gonna 
run the metal detectors over it for a little bit and see what we can find. It's really quiet up here, so pretty. We've only come across one other car. We're having such a great time, but we're gonna be wrapping it up pretty soon and heading over to a 4th of July party. All right, we pulled a few things out. This little aerosol canister, like a BB gun, a fishing weight, and this little toy car. But other than that, this little sand area is pretty clean actually. We made it back down to Southern California. Now we are going to show you guys how we clean the different treasures, like the bottles and cans that we pull out of dig sites. This isn't everything that we pulled out. We already threw um, some of the trash away. And then we have this big bag of cans that had a lot of holes in it and looks like it got shot maybe. Um, so we're not really gonna clean those ones up. We dated the dig site to around 1970. This specific Pepsi Cola can, when we looked up the label, this design was dated around 1959. But some of the other cans we found, like this uh, Diet Pepsi and these Olympia beers, were like late 60s, early 1970s. So that's why we think the dig site was around 1970s. First, we're gonna show you how we would clean the bottles. This is a cool Pepsi Cola bottle. We dated it around 1970. Uh, we don't clean our older bottles, of course, but since this one's 1970, we wanna show you how we would clean this up so then we can display it on our shelf. What you're gonna need for cleaning both the bottles and cans is a big bucket like this. I'm not gonna tell you where I got this one. And then for bottles specifically, you're gonna need just a little bit of Dawn, or just dish soap, we use Dawn. A soft bristled toothbrush and some water. Before we start cleaning the bottle, I just wanted to make sure you all know the number one rule is do not touch the label. As you can see, the label on this is either like a paper or maybe made out of a plastic. And so while you're cleaning it, you just wanna make sure not to touch it because it will rub off and this is how you know what type of bottle it is. So the first thing we're gonna do is just completely submerge the bottle into water and let it fill up. I'm gonna let it fill all the way up. Once it's there, I'm gonna dump it out. As you can see, the stuff inside is already starting to come out just from letting the bottle naturally fill with water. Now I'm gonna pick it up carefully and just dump it out. All right, I've done this a couple times now. After filling it and emptying it a few times, if it gets clean enough just by using water, then you can just leave it at that. It's already getting pretty clean, but we're just gonna move on to the next step to sort of fast forward the process a little bit. All right, I'm just gonna put some Dawn soap in there. If you're having a hard time getting it all sudsy, you can just spray it with the hose a little bit. So now that we have the soapy water, we're just gonna do the same process where we fill it up, get the soap inside, and then dump it out. Okay, I have some soap inside the bottle now, and I'm just gonna take this soft bristled toothbrush, I dipped it in the soapy water, and put it inside gently, and just start cleaning the inside of the bottle. And as you can see, it'll really break up some of that dirt in there. We're not gonna really clean the outside right now anyways, most of the dirt is stuck in the inside. And you can just take your time with this, really get it clean, and this bottle should be looking very good within a few minutes. We brought it over in the sun so you guys could get a better view of it. We just washed a little bit on use the toothbrush on the inside and it's already looking great. Uh, you could probably clean up the outside a little bit if you want it better and some of this dirt is really caked on the inside so you could use like a just a tougher toothbrush in there to try to get some of that off but we think this is looking pretty great already. Okay once you've gotten the bottle as clean as you would like it 
Uh, you can clean the label if you want to. Uh, we don't always recommend to clean the label, especially older bottles, but this label looks really dirty, so we're just gonna really gently try to clean it. You want the toothbrush to have all the dirt off of it. So we washed it, we dried it a little bit, and I'm just gonna pick up just a little bit of these suds here and just very, very lightly go over the label in gentle circles. If you do it too hard, you will take some of that label off. That's why it might be better just not to do it. But since this bottle is just 1970s, we're gonna just gently go over it, try to get some of that dirt off. All right, we are done cleaning the bottle. We just finished with the label. Uh, as you guys can see, it did wear off the side of the label a little bit. It's a little bit wider right there. But overall, we think it looks pretty great. We decided to stop uh, cleaning it once we noticed that. And the back label cleaned up pretty nicely too. There's a little more wearing on the bottom. We don't know if that was from us cleaning it or just from being in the dirt for so long. Overall, we think this bottle cleaned up really nicely and we're just gonna display it, you know, on our shelf or in the garage or something. And now we're gonna move on to the cans. Okay, now we're moving on to cleaning the cans. Just like with the bottle, you need to start out with a bucket full of water. You're also gonna need a soft bristled toothbrush. And then this uh, super secret bottle of powder we have here. Um, once you see me pour it into the bucket, you're gonna see that it is a white powder. And what you're gonna be doing is creating um, a weak acidic solution when you mix it with the water. This is actually a silic acid in this bottle. Uh, we're not gonna show you the percentage of acid though. Um, this one is legal here in California, but depending on what state you live in, you have to kind of check what regulations they put on the acid you are able to use. So like I said, you're gonna pour it in the bucket and make that weak acidic uh, acid solution at a safe level. Um, you're gonna also want to have gloves like these ones that come up pretty far on your arm because you are gonna reach in and grab the cans. And this is for safety purposes because you just wanna be really careful with the acidic solution, not to get it on any skin or get it in your eyes or anything. I'm about to pour the powder into our water bucket. Uh, as you guys can see, I'm actually wearing shorts today. It is recommended to wear pants just so that as much skin as possible is covered but it really is a weak acid that we're using. So even if some of it gets onto the skin, as long as you wash it off right away, that's okay. So I'm gonna pour it in here. There we go. Just a little bit of a pump stuck in there. There we go. That's good. We were shown this process by a really good friend of ours who is actually the master of finding uh, old can dump sites. He has hundreds of these cans. Some of them are really old and very valuable. And he showed us how to clean them up like this. We put the 1959 Pepsi can into the solution. We're kind of testing this one out. As you guys noticed before, we didn't tell you exactly how much of the acetic acid to put in. Um, that's because we've kind of tested this before. We know the ratio, but we just test it on one can first before we're gonna do our more valuable cans or before we're gonna do that six pack of beer that we're gonna clean up. After you pour the powder in, you want to make sure to mix it into the water. Uh, you can use like a painter stick or something and just make sure to throw that out afterwards. And then once all it's mixed in, you can put your can in. As you can see, the top of the can is already looking better. It's almost shiny. Some of the buildup has come off. I have a can here next to it for comparison. This is kind of what the top looked like before. So it's looking a lot better already. While we have the Pepsi can soaking, I wanted to show you guys the six pack of beer cans that we're gonna clean up. So this is the before, as you can see, they're very dirty, very rusty. It is the Lucky Draft beer. We got a full six pack that we think we can clean up pretty well. When they are soaking, just like that Pepsi can, you're gonna, we're gonna leave it in for about 10 to 15 minutes. But the time really does vary. 
Um, it just depends on, for one, how dirty the cans are, how rusty they are, but also the level of percentage of acidity, um, also how old the cans are. So there are a ton of variables that you need to take into consideration uh, when you, uh, for determining the time of how long you want to soak them. All right, we loaded up the six pack into the solution. And I bet you guys are wondering what happened to our test can. I pulled it out to show you guys. Look how incredible it looks just from soaking. Uh, we didn't brush it or anything. It's just been soaking in there for a while. You can see these Pepsi words now really well in this blue writing down here. Try to get it in the sunlight. There we go. It looks pretty incredible already. Way better than it did in the beginning. I got so pumped about how good this Pepsi can looks, how shiny it is just from soaking in there. I actually added in that Diet Pepsi can in with the beers. I'm letting it soak a little bit. I think it'll turn out even better than the Pepsi can and I'm gonna give it to my mom because she loves Diet Pepsi so much. Okay, I'm gonna show you guys the rest of the process of how we clean these. These have been soaking for a little while so I'm gonna pull the can out now. I can already tell this looks way better. Look how clean that looks already. That is crazy. Let me pull another one out. This is just from soaking for like 10 minutes. Yeah, that's crazy. So now we can make it even better by just using the toothbrush. And I dipped it in the solution a little bit and I'm just gonna do these small circular strokes. Especially over the rusty part because that's what we're really trying to get off with this solution. It's crazy how clean these things are already. We can make out some words here on the side. It says uh, General Brewing Corp, San Francisco, California. This is so cool. These are gonna look great. I've just been pulling out each of the cans and giving them a little bit of a scrub. And then once I'm done, I put it back in to soak longer and I pull out another one. Uh, this one has a little bit more rust than the others. I'm really trying to clean off this area right here. I know it says light because of one of the other ones that cleaned up better. So I'm gonna scrub that area a little bit more. I can almost make out the words now. As you can see, it's getting there. I can make out the H and the T on the end of the word now. Still working on it. I'm just trying to get as much of the rust off as possible. Been really scrubbing this one. Like I said before, um, how long you're gonna clean them for really depends on several variables, like how old the can is, um, how long it's been buried, uh, what it's made of, like steel or aluminum. But we've done this type of um, acid cleaning on all the cans that we've found, and we really like how it works and how well it cleans them up. As you guys can see, this is looking great so far. There's a little bit of rust, um, especially on the bottom of the cans. I might keep working on it a little bit and cleaning it up more, um, but I think it looks great already. This could be displayed just like this. It just depends how clean you want it. It'd probably look great on a shelf in a garage or something. I went and grabbed the Diet Pepsi can to show you guys. Even this one looks so cool. Uh, it cleaned up really nicely. So I just wanted to say that you can clean these for hours and hours and hours. And sometimes some of the rust and stuff just won't come off. Um, we just like to get it to where it's pretty shiny and you can read all the labels on it. So I think these look great. And we'll probably stop here with this one. But you can read a lot of the words on it, even like the ingredients right here. I'm gonna give this as a gift to my mom like I said earlier I think that'll be really cool thank you for watching my video I hope you enjoyed it if you like what you saw make sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our page